As we gather here for worship tonight, I think we're all acutely aware that this is not the Christmas that any of us expected. There's a lot that's different this year. A lot this year that we're dealing with that ideally we'll never have to deal with again. But I think that's okay. In fact, I think it's appropriate that this should be how we celebrate Christmas. Because if you think about it, the whole celebration of Christmas is the celebration of something that nobody ever expected. Nothing that first Christmas was what anybody expected. Take Joseph, for example. This is not at all what he had in mind. If the census had been just a month earlier or a month later, it could have made all the difference. But the timing was what it was. There was nothing he could do about it. And of course, Mary certainly didn't want to be traveling like this. So pregnant with sore feet, sore hips, riding over bumpy roads. I can imagine her being very worried about the safety of the baby over such a long trip and what they'd find when they got to Bethlehem. Would there be anyone to take them in? Would they have to sleep in the town square? Now the story we're all familiar with <clears throat> says that they found lodging in the stable of an inn, but that's probably not quite right. The translation probably actually means a guest room because Joseph going to his hometown would have had family there. <clears throat> he had people, uncles, second cousins, uh, great aunts and uncles, maybe a crazy uncle, but people who cared about him, <clears throat> even if he'd never met them. This certainly wasn't what they had in mind. I don't imagine they really had any advance warning that they'd have another guest. The house seems to have already been full because they had no place to put the young couple. But the last thing they would do would be to turn them away, especially in Mary's condition. It would have been shameful for them not to take care of family. And so they did what families do, and they made room. And they put the couple with the livestock in the stable. Not what they had in mind, but they made do. And the animals made do. I can imagine they must have been rather surprised to find, um, find a baby in their breakfast bowl. But they did what they could. <clears throat> of course, among those animals was Mary's ride. I imagine this isn't what he had in mind what, that he'd be doing either. It's a long walk to take all of a sudden. I can imagine that donkey was awfully tired when they got there. Now, the story goes on to say that they had some other visitors then that very full house that night. Watching their flocks by night were some shepherds. Shepherds, and of course, their sheep. <clears throat> now, shepherds aren't necessarily the um, genteel type that we often picture them as. They're kind of rough. These guys are watching their sheep by night to protect them from other shepherds who might come and try and take them either by stealth or by force. They were all settled in for a nice, quiet, they hoped, watch for the night, when what should appear before them but an angel. <clears throat> Once again, angels aren't quite this beatific. They're terrifying. Six-winged creatures, uh, unlike anything they've ever seen. And of course, the shepherds were terrified. The angel, we know this because the angels had to tell them not to be afraid. They brought good news, not uh, terrible news or fearful news. And the shepherds, once they realized what that good news was, left their sheep. They left the sheep that they were protecting, that they were guarding. <clears throat> 
Can you imagine leaving sheep alone un un and unprotected? That must have made quite some news for them to have to do that. They went out there that night to protect their sheep and they ended up leaving them. Not at all what they had in mind. And so, yeah, this is all about a night in which nothing happened that we expected. <clears throat> Most of us are dealing with things this year that we didn't expect. Healthcare workers, I can imagine, especially have no rest this holiday. It's been a long, exhausting job up until now. And it's instead of getting a break for the holiday, many of them are going to be working overtime and not getting their holidays off because there's just so few people to go around now and so much to do. Teachers are much the same. They've been giving their all for weeks now, giving everything they have just to keep things going in the classroom. <clears throat> They've come into winter break spent with nothing left. And then we've got this rather strange holiday that's not quite what we expected. What other things are going on that we don't expect this year? Certainly there's less family around. There are things around that shouldn't be, like COVID. But there's also things that are missing. People and traditions, <clears throat> things we wish that could happen this year that can't. Everything this holiday just seems a little out of place. But I think that it makes sense. Because when you really think about it, this entire holiday is all about things that we expect and don't quite turn out that way. It's a holiday about expectations being upended. <clears throat> because this is a holiday celebrating a God who comes in the least expected way. We expected a Messiah who'd come riding in on a white horse in shining armor. We expected a great and powerful God to rend the heavens and come down. What we got instead was a baby. Now, on some level that makes sense, right? Every great person begins as a baby. But that's just it. Our God comes as a person, as one of us. That's why we celebrate Christmas. A reminder that Jesus wasn't just fully human, excuse me, fully divine, he was also fully human. That God's plan has always been to be among us. That God has always been with us in ways that we don't expect. Jesus didn't come to teach us how to be spiritual, how to be um, people that transcended our flesh to become godly. He came to teach us how to be human, to access what has always been there, that love and that compassion and that abundant life that God has had planned for us from the very beginning. And so as we look at this odd assortment of travelers and livestock and rough and tumble shepherds and angels and Jedi masters, I think that that says something about our holiday this year. That even though it's not quite what we expect, it's what we need. That even if it's not what we hoped it would be, it is what God wants it to be. 
This is the night when God comes among us. When we remember that God is always with us, has always been with us. That God's love has taken on human flesh and walks among us even now. That God's love is enfleshed, incarnate in us. For we are the body of Christ. Amen.